Nearly a decade ago, I found myself struggling with doubts about my husband. I was in my early 30s and newly married, and while I had anticipated challenges given his demanding work schedule, the reality was far more isolating. My husband's absences stretched for weeks at a time, leaving me feeling increasingly alone. Despite my efforts to welcome him home with understanding, my frustration grew, and I became harsh whenever he was around. His attempts to comfort me only led to further silence when he sensed my dissatisfaction. I yearned for his attention despite his busy career. My emotions clouded my judgment, and I couldn't view him objectively anymore. Whenever we argued, he would promise, I'll settle down soon, and we'll visit that island you love. But those promises remained unfulfilled. One evening, I said, work seems more important to you than me. If that's the case, don't force yourself to come home. I'm exhausted too, and seeing you so detached only makes me sad. No matter how harshly I spoke, he never seemed to take my words to heart. The growing realization that our marriage might be ending became a nagging worry. It wasn't until I discovered a hotel receipt and membership card in his suit pocket that I began to suspect infidelity. The receipt showed that he had stayed at the hotel on a day he was supposedly on a business trip, earning points for multiple nights. My husband's popularity with women at work, combined with the evidence I found, led me to believe he had found another partner. Why should I suffer while he's with someone else? I thought, and I started planning outings and weekends to distract myself. For a while, the distractions were enjoyable, but eventually, the facade wore thin. I grew tired of pretending and realized that maybe it was time for both of us to move on. Avoiding each other had become the norm, and perhaps he would be happier with someone else. It was clear that the life we had shared was no longer what I wanted. Summoning the courage to ask for a divorce was daunting. I questioned whether there was any other option, but it seemed my husband was also involved with someone new. After much deliberation, I sent him a text. Can you come home early today? We need to talk. He replied promptly, I need to talk to you too. I'll try to leave as soon as I can. As I waited for him to return, my heart raced with anxiety. I felt a mix of certainty and fear about our decision. My husband's heart seemed to be elsewhere. When he arrived home shortly after 9 p.m., I noticed he had lost a significant amount of weight. Despite his kind eyes and familiar voice, there was an emotional distance between us. He remained mostly silent, which made me feel as though he was dismissing our shared history. I became increasingly frustrated and began to argue. Despite my anger, he listened quietly. When I confronted him about his new girlfriend, he seemed surprised and briefly smiled. His reaction, rather than anger, made me laugh. For the first time in a long while, we shared a genuine laugh, which was a bittersweet reminder of happier times. Our conversation took an unexpected turn as my husband, looking revitalized, said, let's stop attacking each other. I don't want to leave you because I don't dislike you. He agreed to my proposal to sort out our belongings and prepare for our separation. He even encouraged me to take anything I wanted, saying it was his way of atonement. As we cleaned the room, his tears and sadness were palpable. I felt the same way and decided to take a break for the rest of the day. After our cleaning session, I took a bath to clear my mind, knowing that our relationship was coming to an end. I didn't want to tarnish my memories of him any further. When I was ready for bed, my husband entered the room and gently held me. This feels strange, I said. I feel sorry for your girlfriend. He quietly replied, just one more time, I want to be by your side. His trembling embrace and weight loss were evident. Are you okay? I asked. You seem different. He admitted he had been losing weight and, despite my questions, seemed reluctant to explain further. His physical change was a stark contrast to the muscular build I was used to. She likes me like this, he said. Feeling a mix of sadness and resignation, I remarked. If he's so happy with her, why doesn't he just move on? I guess there's no need to cry, or maybe these are tears of joy. In a final attempt to manage my emotions, I said, You're still the same. I appreciate that part of you. I wish you happiness from tomorrow on. I'll be praying for you wherever you are, my husband said softly before he began to snore. He had always moved at his own pace right until the end. I hope so too, I murmured to his sleeping face before drifting off myself. The exhaustion from staying up late to clean the room caused me to oversleep the next morning. When I finally woke up, my husband was gone. In the living room, I found in a four-size envelope on the table. 
Inside, I discovered a bank book and a collection of documents related to our marital property. Among the papers was a surprisingly large sum of money in the bank book, and in a small envelope were the completed divorce papers with only my signature missing. Panic set in as I tried to call my husband's cell phone, but it had been disconnected. I spent several days trying to locate him through his parents and friends, but no one would give me any information. Eventually, I contacted his company only to learn that my husband had resigned months earlier. His departure, if it were simply to be with a new girlfriend, might have made sense, but this seemed extreme. Why had he gone to such lengths to avoid me? The mental strain from these revelations was overwhelming. My husband had gone to considerable effort to arrange financial compensation for me, and now that I was free, I decided to seek solace on a remote island I had always loved. The island, home to only about 3,000 people, was a day-long journey from the mainland. I had visited it once with my husband and was enchanted by its natural beauty and tranquil pace. He had promised we would return after his work was done. Though I missed him, perhaps I needed the island's peace and quiet. I quit my job and rented out our house, making the risky move to the island. I wasn't sure how he managed the mortgage, but it was clear he had worked tirelessly. The house was filled with memories and I couldn't stay there any longer. Determined not to waste his efforts, I resolved to embrace island life. I adjusted to the slower pace and began helping elderly neighbors with their needs. Initially seen as an outsider, I eventually became accepted as part of the community. With enough assets to live comfortably, I found that idleness was dispiriting, so I took on the role of assisting the local elderly. As I grew accustomed to the work, I felt more integrated into island life. One day, I learned from a co-worker that a new resident had arrived for medical treatment. This person had chosen the island as his final residence due to a lack of treatment options elsewhere. When the new resident requested a visit and I was the only one available, I was nervous as I headed to his house. It was a small home on a hill with an ocean view, renovated enough to be livable but still modest. I rang the doorbell and a soft voice invited me in. Inside, I found the new resident sitting in front of a window, the sun and breeze surrounding him. As I approached, I squinted to make out his face against the backlight. Good to meet you today, sir, I said. When he turned to face me, I was stunned. There, sitting before me, was my ex-husband. We both stood there in shock, unable to move. My ex-husband broke the silence with a mischievous smile. You found me out, he said. Confusion and disbelief overwhelmed me. What are you doing here? I managed to ask, grappling with the fact that he wasn't supposed to be here and the information I had received. He took my hand and guided me to sit beside him. He held my hand until I relaxed, leaving me at a loss for words. As I sat there, I heard a voice at the door. I wiped my tears and opened it to find an elderly man. Surprised by my tear-streaked face, he bowed and entered, taking a seat next to my ex-husband. How are you today? he asked gently. My ex-husband responded that everything was fine and began chatting with the elderly man. I realized that the man was likely the island's only doctor. I remembered my colleagues mentioning the island's reliance on a small clinic and its sole practitioner. It seemed my ex-husband had come to spend his final days here. I listened intently, wondering if there was anything I could do to help. The doctor's visit lasted about ten minutes. Unable to hold back, I ran after him as he left. My anxious demeanor startled him, but when I explained our connection, he seemed to understand. He couldn't disclose my ex-husband's condition or treatment details without his consent but mentioned that my ex-husband might soon be unable to walk. It's a pity for him to spend his final days alone. Please be there for him, the doctor advised. I was stunned. What had become of my husband's girlfriend? Heavy-hearted, I returned to the house where my husband awaited me. He greeted me with a knowing smile, as if he had anticipated my questioning the doctor. You're back, he said. Desperate to be close to him, I asked if I could spend the night. His house was sparsely furnished with just a few pieces of luggage and some futons. It was the first time since our discussion about divorce that I had slept beside him. As we settled under the covers, we shared our stories of how we ended up here. I was eager to ask about his illness, but decided to avoid painful topics for now, instead of reminiscing about happier times. My feelings about his past relationship were complicated. I inquired if he had brought her to the island before I arrived. But he only laughed and suggested there was a sorrowful story behind it that he wasn't ready to discuss. I chose not to press further to avoid hurting his feelings. 
The next morning, I informed my employer of the situation and took some time off to be with my husband. I pushed him around the island in a wheelchair, showing him the places I remember from our previous visit and sharing new sights with him. It was comforting to be together, even in these circumstances. I wish we had been more open with each other when we were married. Despite our divorce, my feelings for him remained strong, but I knew expressing them might confuse him. I decided to be by his side as a friend, cherishing the time we had left. The disease took a toll on him, gradually diminishing his strength until he could no longer walk or even enjoy the long-awaited walks we had planned. Daily tasks became increasingly difficult, and he began to sleep more frequently. The doctor visited daily, and while my husband was no longer in pain, it was heartbreaking to see him deteriorate. I couldn't accept that he was leaving me so soon. I stayed with him constantly, reading his favorite books and telling him about the sights and sounds he had missed. I wanted to share a beautiful sunset with him, but his hand had grown cold and his breathing was shallow and irregular. Panic surged as I called the doctor, who promised to come immediately. I awaited him with a sinking heart, hoping for reassurance that everything would be all right. When the doctor arrived, he examined my husband and said, his blood pressure has dropped significantly. Let him go peacefully. I believe he wants you to stay with him, so I'll step back and be available if needed. Please remain by his side. With that, the doctor left. The moment had arrived. I knew it was inevitable, but it was still unbearable. I'm grateful for our time together. We face challenges, but I truly adore you. I whispered to my husband as I held his hand. He gave a gentle squeeze in return, an impossible yet unmistakable gesture. Soon after, he took his final breath. I cried endlessly but felt solace in being there for him in his last moments. In the aftermath, I was so busy with arrangements and sorting through his belongings that I had no time to mourn until after the burial. When I finally returned home, I found a mountain of mail waiting for me. Among the letters I discovered the familiar handwriting of my husband. He had written dozens of letters over the time we had been apart. His letters began on the day of our reunion. He had moved to the island hoping to find me and was delighted and surprised when he actually did. Reading his letters, I laughed at his humor and felt deeply touched by his affection. The letters, dated daily, showed a gradual decline in his handwriting and the length of his messages, reflecting the progression of his illness. One letter revealed the truth about our divorce. My husband's illness had started during our marriage, and despite treatment, there was no hope for recovery. He had planned the divorce to spare me from the burden of his illness and to provide for my future with the assets he liquidated. I had fallen into his trap, unaware of his true intentions, but he had hoped to leave me well provided for. The realization of his sacrifice and the pain it caused overwhelmed me. Tears flowed freely. A knock at the door interrupted my grief. I opened it to find the doctor standing there. What brings you here, doctor? I asked. He handed me a sealed envelope, identical to the one I had just read from my husband. He asked me to post a few days' worth of letters before he fell into a coma. I couldn't refuse, and this is the last letter. He wanted me to give it to you when you returned home. I thanked the doctor and read the final letter alone. It was a simple but heartfelt note. Thank you. I love you. Though our journey was difficult, our hearts remain connected. I love you too, I whispered, feeling as though I saw a faint smile on my husband's portrait. I continue to live on this island, now officially recognized as a resident. I built a grave next to where my husband's house once stood. I am certain he still watches over the island from his window. One day, I will join him there. For now, I find peace and happiness surrounded by the memories of our time together. Thank you for staying with me until the end. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.